A top story, Taiwan's defense ministry says China has deployed surface-to-air missiles on the contested Woody Island in the South China Sea. Beijing claims it's in self-defense. But the move will likely raise tensions even further with neighboring countries locked in a territorial feud in the region. Before Taiwan's announcement, President Obama discussed the need to peacefully resolve issues in this disputed area. We discussed the need for tangible steps in the South China Sea to lower tensions, including a halt to further reclamation, new construction and militarization of disputed areas. Freedom of navigation must be upheld and lawful commerce should not be impeded. I reiterated that the United States will continue to fly, sail, and operate wherever international law allows. And we will support the right of all countries to do the same. Well, senior international correspondent Ivan Watson joins us from Hong Kong with late details. Ivan. Aisha, this all has to do with competing claims for the South China Sea, a region through which about a third of the world's shipping passes through. Now, both U.S. and Taiwanese defense officials, they say that China has placed surface-to-air missiles in a disputed island archipelago here, the Paracel Islands, on an island called Woody Island. Now, that is claimed not only by China, but also by Vietnam and Taiwan. And this is an island where China has had a presence now for more than a half century. And yet some are seeing this really as a provocation. Why? Because President Obama has just been hosting the leaders of Southeast Asian nations and calling for all countries in this region, both large and small, to follow rule of law to avoid the militarization of the region and also vowing that the U.S. will continue to carry out so-called freedom of navigation operations, basically sending warships and planes into these areas, especially to challenge Chinese claims to parts of this region. An area of real concern are the Spratly Islands here, which are claimed not only by the Philippines, but also by China, very far away from this area. China has been embarking on really incredible engineering projects here. Let's take a look at Fiery Cross. This was basically a reef, not even an island, that's before, and now look What's happened after the Chinese teams have come in, they've built an entire island as well as a deep water port and even an airstrip. Uh, and this despite the fact that the Philippines claims this as its own economic exclusion zone. China defends its moves here, saying that whatever defense mechanisms are put here, it's purely for self-defense and that it is building up these areas to help in case of fishing emergencies and medical emergencies and basically saying that the U.S. should not intervene in this region. Aisha? Uh, Ivan Watson joining us there from Hong Kong with all the, the necessary context. Ivan, appreciate it. Thank you breaking story at this hour for you. Uh, we're getting reports out of East Asia telling us that the Chinese authorities have deployed uh, a missile system to a disputed island system in the South China Sea. That was top of the agenda at a meeting of ASEAN ministers taking place in the deserts of California. China, ironically, of course, not a member of ASEAN. Let's take you to the heart of the story. Our correspondent, Margot Ortigas, is there for us covering the gathering at Rancho Mirage in California. So, Margot, how, how significant is this? Well, this really, if, uh, if indeed confirmed, will have been the first time that China would have done something uh, this strongly, militarily speaking, in disputed waters. Now, they have been seen to have constructed islands in waters that have been claimed by Vietnam, the Philippines, uh, Brunei, and other countries in Southeast Asia, uh, including Taiwan. But they have said that any installations that they have put on these islands are for civilian purposes, and that eventually they were for the shared benefit of all. Now, if they indeed have set up uh, such a system that could be seen as provocation by the United States, at the end of the summit here between the ASEAN leaders and the United States, President Obama did say that the United States was duty-bound to help the region basically remain peaceful and stable by ensuring freedom of navigation, which meant that they would continue with military patrols and flybys uh, with the uh, Air Force planes from the United States to make sure that the freedom of navigation in that area is not threatened. So something like this by China will definitely be seen as a provocative move, not just by the United States, but all the countries in the region uh, that are relying on that area remaining free. The symbolism of this, Marga, is pretty obvious, but is it just symbolism or is it something potentially more dangerous? 
Well, China has always said that it has no intention to rock peace and stability in the region. So a move such as this will likely be portrayed by them as a means of shared defense for the region to stop any other international uh, threats coming in. That is the way they have portrayed previous instances that might have been considered uh, an escalation by the United States and her allies in the region. However, as you said, indeed, the symbolism here not lost. It was a day where the ASEAN leaders were invited to the United States by President Obama. Indeed, something that many analysts see as the U.S. trying to reassert its influence in a region where China has indeed been gaining in dominance, not just militarily, but also financially. The symbolism and also the timing of this, Marga, highly significant. I mean, it takes time to put this kind of operation in place. Will this be perceived in the region as a direct reaction to the ASEAN ministers getting together with Barack Obama significantly as well for the first time on U.S. soil? That is most likely to be the case. I mean, China, for the most part, leading up to the summit, has said that they weren't threatened. In fact, China itself has had a strategic partnership with ASEAN for well over a decade. It has said that it is very confident in its relationship with the individual nations in the Southeast Asian region. But at the same time, let's not forget that the Philippines has actually brought its case against China's uh, seeming aggression over uh, disputed waters to international arbitration at The Hague. And a resolution or an outcome is expected sometime in the latter part of this year. Now, that's something that could definitely tip public opinion against China should that tribunal then decide that what China has been doing is against international law. Marga, thanks very much.